And while I appreciate it, I also take offense to it because it's like, I'm not Christian. I don't believe in that bullshit. So don't act as if I do. Anyway, what else is on here? Let's see. There's pictures of, um, oh, from uh, Alan Cummings' dressing room at Cabaret on Broadway. He's got, uh, oh, what's his name? The guy who plays Arrow. He's really cute. He's got Paul McCartney. There's people in there. It must be really amazing to be a celebrity. And not only because you're, I mean, you're famous or whatever, which has, it's a double-edged sword, obviously, to be famous, but um, you get to be around some of the most talented people in the world. And to be able to be, you know, if you're an artist of any kind or a designer, you know, like, uh, you know, like me or somebody who's in the arts or, or visual arts, you know, architecture, design, or just, you know, fine art, like painting or music or whatever, if you're an artist of any kind, you understand that they're what the magic is of being around really great artists of some sort, whether, you know, whatever craft they have. So if, if it's an actor to be able to be around the best of the best of the best all the time and, and have them as your friends and people, you know, and hang out with and work with all the time really must be a fucking amazing life <laughs> to do that. I mean, you know, they have, really enchanted lives to be able to live a life like that and have so much money and have so much influence and people who listen to them and can make a difference with just the words that they speak and to affect, you know, people through art and, and to change people's lives is an amazing, amazing thing. So I certainly, um, envy, people who have that. I don't envy, I, don't, I envy the positive side of it. I don't envy the negative side, like a fame and fortune and stuff like that, but I definitely do about that. Oh, um, I, I talked to the, um, I talked about, uh, a few days ago, um, on my show about the, um, May, December romance between Stephen Fry and his, uh, 30 year younger, uh, fiance and how I felt it was, you know, fine. I have nothing against it. It's just, it, for some reason I, I said, I mentioned that it makes me feel somewhat weird because 30 years is a huge difference, you know, whichever direction you go up or down and it's different generations, several different generations apart. So I, uh, uh, so anyway, it's online. They're talking about people freaking out about the age gaps and gay relationships and saying it's homophobic. And this lady says, freaking out about age gaps in gay relationships is homophobic. In straight relationships with an age gap, words like gold digger and trophy wife get thrown around. When it's a gay relationship, those words change to pedophile and pervert. Now, I don't feel that way at all. I don't feel that at all. I've, and I've talked about this before as well in more detail in terms of the sexual side of uh, May, December romances, you know, an older man, a younger boy, a younger guy, whatever. And does it always mean it's a boy is a father figure type relationship. Maybe, I don't know. I don't think it always is that way, but what's wrong with that? It's the same way with women, women and men too. When women marry or into older men, generally they're looking for a father figure, um, <clears throat> whether it's subconscious or not, or someone to take care of them, someone they feel safe with someone they know they can depend on, you know, dot, dot, dot. It's the same for gay men. I think younger gay men look to older men that way as well. Um, especially, you know, considerably older gay men. And I know when I was younger in my twenties, I certainly sought out men who were older than myself, not by that much, not by 30 years, but like, you know, when I was in my teens, I would date guys in their early twenties. When I was in my twenties, I would date guys in their early thirties. And so then my thirties, you know, I've been married. So and my husband's seven years older than I am or six and a half years older than I am. So, um, I, I I've always, you know, liked older men. And I think it's because <clears throat> I think it's because I, I, um, I personally have always been more mature than people my own age, you know, even as a child, a young child, like five, six years old, I was much more mature than people my own age. Um, I think part of that's because I started school, um, at five years old and all of my friends were six years old, you know? So, all, so throughout all of my school years, most everybody was a year and a half, a year or a half a year older than I was at least. And, uh, because when my birthday is in the middle of the year. And so I think that's part of it. And also I was raised around adults, you know, the first five, six years of my life, almost exclusively around, you know, other adults and, uh, 
And then as I aged, um, I spent a lot of my time with my grandmother and my mother and my older relatives. And, you know, my cousins were all that were my age. The closest one was five years older than me. And he was always in Germany uh, or traveling around the world or somewhere in Japan or something because my uncle was a, a colonel in the army. Um, so I, I never really, so the friends and stuff I, I had to make later in life, you know, like 19 years old, I started to make friends locally and hang out with them. Uh, my point is, as I was kind of uh, older mentally than the people around me, and I've always been that way. And so I think that's one reason why I have always gravitated towards people, who, you know, men who are older than myself, as opposed to um, younger men. And it's not that younger men have nothing to offer. I just has never been into them that much. <laughs> um, you know, even, I mean, sexually, they're... I have dated guys who were younger than me and had sex with them. Yes. But, um, when I was, you know, single, most of the guys I dated were my age or older. So, um, that's just how I am. So I don't see there's anything wrong with it at all. I certainly don't call it, call them pedophile or a pervert because they're such a great age gap. I don't think it's anyone's place to say that someone's relationship is wrong or, you know, inappropriate. If, as long as the two people are, of um, legal age, there is really no reason uh, for anyone to ever say that that's wrong. It's what's what makes those two people happy, and that's it. <laughs> um, as long as it's consensual and they're of age, then it's no one's fucking business. And if that's what makes them happy for whatever reason, whether it's for true love or because of security or financial gain or status or or publicity, or whatever it is, and they both understand why they're in the relationship and they, they're okay with the reasons, and that's fine. That's how I see it anyway. Uh, what else is on here? Oh, there's a, an article about how to score a free burrito at, at Chipotle this January. It says, to do so, you'll have to buy an entree off the sofritas menu on the Monday, on that Monday. Then when you bring your receipt to a Chipotle between January 27th and 28th, you'll be rewarded with a free burrito a free burrito, bowl, salad, or taco order of your choosing. Yes, you can go back to meat if you want. Get a free burrito. Chipotle first introduced Sofritas, its vegan braised tofu option in 2013. So basically you have to try the Sofritas, which is a vegan braised tofu option. And I'm fine with that. I like vegan stuff. I mean, not all of it, but I like tofu. <laughs> so I, I'm totally cool with that. Um, and by the way, if you've never had tofu, it's actually good. It's it's actually really good. It's really doesn't really have much of a flavor. It takes on the flavors of whatever it's in, sort of. You know, it's sort of. It, they're saying it says in this article it tastes a lot like scrambled eggs, and I guess that's kind of true. It kind of does. I guess it can. It's more firm than that typically. Of course, there's firm tofu. There's soft tofu. There's extra firm tofu, and you can use it in different types of ways for different types of recipes depending on what you're making. Um, but you can actually grill tofu. You can, I mean, you can do all sorts of things with it. And, you know, I tried it a lot when I was on my vegan kick years ago and I tried that where I gained weight because I, I was eating so many carbs because there was like no protein hardly. Um, you know, and all the protein had to come from legumes and bean, beans and stuff, or it was just really difficult for me. That's just why it didn't last very long. But um, I didn't mind eating that way. It just was really hard. Eating vegan Oh my God. It's like, you know, that means no meat and no fish and no, uh, cheese and no dairy. I mean, nothing. <laughs> so you're just left with vegetables, uh, and grains, um, and legumes. That's pretty much and beans or whatever. And that's pretty much it. So it, it also depends on if it has, it can even have milk in it. So you can't use anything that has milk in it. So if you have a, a bread that uses milk, you can't drink, you can't eat that. And, you know, it's just so complicated and, and trying to eat out as a vegan was like impossible because you could never find anywhere to eat. I mean, you could go out and you could make that. You'd have to always have to make them make things specifically for you unless you went to a restaurant that served like vegan and vegetarian food all the time, of course, which there are some of those here. Um, but it was just really hard. So I was like, no, I, this is not worth it to me. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't, it just, I wouldn't, I wasn't happy, you know? And I even made vegan like cupcakes and vegan stuff like that. And it was good, but I had to make every fucking thing. So to me, to be a true vegan, 
you either have to be exceptionally, exceptionally disciplined all of the fucking time, or you have to be like have lots, lots of money, be really, really rich, and have a private chef who can <laughs> constantly make all of your food for you, so you can always eat as a vegan. Otherwise, it's like what the fuck. I mean, it was just really hard. Now, being a vegetarian was a lot easier because I could have cheese. And, um, I didn't really miss meat after a while. I didn't really miss it that much. I tried it for about two, two or three months. I think it was two or three months. I, I lasted. And then Thanksgiving came around. This is when I was like in my twenties. And, um, and so I, I stopped at that point. Um, but for me, it was more about being, um, one, one, it was healthier, they said, but also, and I did feel that's one thing I will admit, you know, as both a vegan and as a vegetarian, when I was doing those two things, I felt really light and clean. It's hard to explain, but meat, it kind of weighs you down. And when you eat it all the time, it's like you have this heaviness, this feeling you don't really notice because you're so used to it. <laughs> but when you don't eat it, you and you're eating vegetables and whatever all the time instead, you realize how light you feel and how good you feel. You feel energized. You feel it's just a really different feeling. And so it's a really great way to live. If you want to live that way, I think it's fantastic. I just do not have the discipline. <laughs> I would, as I said, have to have a personal chef all the time or my food constantly delivered all the time. Someone to go shopping for me. So I wouldn't pick, you know, the things I shouldn't be eating. I mean, I really just, it just is not for me. Um, but the reason I was doing it was vegetarianism anyway, especially, um, was because I, uh, oh, excuse me. It's real professional. Sorry. <laughs> was because I, um, what was I going to say? Oh, cause of the, the, the mor morality, um, of it. You know, I, I thought that it was immoral in a way, um, for, for, for we as humans, I still think this, I, even as a meat eater, uh, to continue to eat meat when we don't have to, we don't have to eat meat. We can function and live just fine off of it, but meat tastes good. Meat is filling. It's a high protein source. Um, it's cheap relative to uh, some of the other things you have to, to do. It's not cheap to make, but it's cheap to buy. Um, and it, although it does hurt the environment too, that's another reason to be a vegan or a vegetarian. So, I mean, there's a ton of reason, ton more good reasons to be a vegan or vegetarian than there are to be a meat eater yet because we are human and we're slave to our senses and to our desires. We continue to eat it, even though we know it's not the best option, especially since it's not sustainable. Eventually we'll run out of meat for everybody and we'll have to depend on other things to eat in like a hundred thousand years or whatever. I don't know whenever that will happen. <laughs> anyway. Um, I also read an article. Uh, there was an article about, um, people who take a lot of selfies, you know, and I know people, I know some people who take a lot of selfies, like it's all they ever do is take selfies. Okay. <laughs> Especially some of my nieces and nephews and stuff. But, um, and I think that maybe it's more generational, but it says that, um, it says people who take selfies in general are more likely to be a, a sociopath and a, a narcissist. And it says people who, take them all the time and then instantly like upload them or whatever are more sociopathic or my more psychopath psychopathic and then the ones that are um uh, have to edit them first which would be me if i were to do that all the time <laughs> are more narcissistic so if you take pictures all the time of yourself selfies i mean and you constantly upload them you may be a psycho a psycho and if you uh do that but you always edit them first in photoshop or something to bring out your best features then you're probably a narcissist so congratulations for that <laughs> good news good news um what else do i have on here on my facebook today i'm trying to see what else is on here Oops. Sometimes a stupid Facebook, you know, Facebook needs to change its fucking look. It's so dated and old. I'm so tired of that fucking blue bar. I mean, God, go away. All right. Um, what else is on here? Not much. There's <laughs> not much out here. Um, hmm. Marty, uh, no. Uh, somebody's got neon glasses on. Those are kind of cool. Timothy has neon glasses on. Oh, there's a uh, thing about it's, it says it's kiss a ginger day today or yesterday. 
They have a picture of Michael Fassbender, who's gorgeous, by the way, and Seth Farina, who I guess is okay looking as well. Oh, I was watching um, tonight. I was watching Celebrity Apprentice. We were watching it, and we watched that. And you know, um, uh, what's his name? 